today we're in Shropshire and we're going to a place called Millichop Park or it could be pronounced Millichope, that's how it's spelt but uh, this is a 19th century house and there are gardens but there was an earlier house on the site um, that was replaced by the current house so we're just going to have a little look around the gardens and stuff because I don't think the house will be open today but uh, it should be interesting just to have a little look around and stuff I've just parked the car and uh, paid the six pound entrance fee and uh, we're going to head up just towards the house first I think well look at this there's the house There's a nice big lake in front of the house, which is always nice to see. Wow, that looks really good. And if we just turn around to the right, we've got this Ionic temple placed above uh, sort of a cliff or a rotunda. You can call it either. This place is quite uh, stunning visually. And we're uh, we're into autumn now, and uh, it's quite good looking at the um, contrasting colours of the different trees. Sort of the oranges and reds are coming out now. Before we uh, move on from this little area, you see the route under up there, the cliff face underneath, um, apparently that wasn't a cliff originally and um, the owner at the time that the route under was built had the land there sort of blasted or broken away to make it um, look like a cliff because it was sort of um, a time when the picturesque movement was popular. So um, it was all about creating a sort of beautiful or fantasy landscape. So that's quite interesting. But it does the job. It looks um, looks really good up there, perched on the top of that rotunda. Yeah, so this rotunda or Ionic temple um, was built around 1770 to the designs of uh, someone called George Stewart. Try not to fall off the edge up here, down into the lake. So there's that cliff from the side. And then the uh, rotunda on the top. And we'll pop up and have a little look in there now. This is a uh, grade two star listed by the way. And this little figure here, these are known as putty or putty. And there's the dome at the top. Got a few cracks appearing in it. 
nice view of the house in its elevated position from up here. It's really nice how it's all laid out. Very picturesque as you would say. And this was actually built as a memorial to uh, two sons of Thomas More and they were killed in battle for uh, the navy. As you can see it's like a classical Grecian design, neoclassical. Could probably do with some restoration work at some point. But it's, um, it's a very nice thing. And there's a sort of a plaque above the door. And I dare say that explains a bit about the uh, memorial and stuff. Alright, so uh, try and make a bit more progress towards the house. And here we are at the front of the house. Lovely view um, down to the lake from near the front of the house. Towards the left hand side you can see the rotunda again. On top of that cliff area. And there's the house. So the current house, this was built um, between 1835 and 1840 in the uh, Greek Revival or neoclassical style. Let's move up to the next level that the house is on. Looks like they're operating a tea room up here today. As you can see, a fair few people have come today to see the place because it's um, not open very often. This is round the back of the house. There are uh, a couple of bits of statuary opposite the side of the house. This one's obviously uh, someone playing music. There's a little dog accompanying it. Huh? A bit worn away obviously but... That's quite nice. And there's another one over here. Someone with a little lamp. Maybe collecting some type of uh, flowers or something. It's 
some kind of enclosed little garden down here. Some little ponds. We'll just pop down to um, the lawn in front of the house again for a second. Incidentally, um, the house and the garden landscape, they're both grade two star listed. And uh, the house was built by the architect Edward Haycock for the Reverend Norgrave Pemberton. And um, at the time, he was the rector of Church Stretton, which is nearby. It's a lovely little house, that is. As I said before, I think it's in the uh, Greek Revival or Neoclassical style. And at the front, you can see there's a front portico with six ionic pillars. That's a really nice looking uh, little house, that is. Something that's quite interesting is um, where those people are up there in the middle, that's where the entrance is now I believe. But originally the main entrance to the house was actually on this level here, on the top of the lawn. And if you look at this bit in the middle, this is probably where the main entrance used to be, behind these little um, plants or shrubs. So that's been blocked up and now you enter on the higher level. Get a bit closer to the uh, main lake now, with the rotunda behind it, just for a little look from down here. So that's quite a nice scene, isn't it? With the rotunda, just on top of that cliff there. And just sort of arching over and framing the rotunda there, you can probably see uh, my favourite tree, the uh, cedar of Lebanon. Just hanging over it. Yeah, it's very scenic here. Alright then, let's go and find our next little feature. Some cracking trees here as well. Not sure what these are, they're redwoods or something like that. Possibly. I'm not sure what this little garden's called, but um, it's quite pretty. I believe down this end there's uh, actually a swimming pool, <laughs> which is uh, private, 
as the sign says. There we go. Won't go any further, but yeah, as you can see, swimming pool that's covered up at the moment. Nice statue at the side by the doors over there. So you could uh, come out of the swimming pool and you can uh, go straight into the parkland over the other side there. Aerial view of the swimming pool here. Yeah. At the end of this uh, long walk um, there's a plinth there and you can imagine that probably would have had a big statue on the top which would have um, caught your eye from the other end of the walk or nearer to the house. But obviously uh, that needs replacing at some point or something. You can even see how, it's, um, how it would have been framed by the trees there. Behind the house is uh, an obelisk or what's known as the cenotaph sometimes and this obelisk is um, apparently 10 meters high and it was completed around 1780 There's some uh, stones around here, not sure. Crumble, oh, so these might be uh, pets. Crumble, 1981 to 90. Widgeon, 1984 to 98. And Sassy, 1990 to 02. And then there's a porridge and cocoa. And then Bessie, 1980 to 1994. And then Molly and Maggie. And then just further along from the obelisk, you can see uh, we're at a slightly higher level behind the house. I'll just uh, pop along here and have a little look. And uh, apparently next year they're having um, a few days where you can book a tour of the house and stuff like that. So I might pop back uh, next year and have a little look in the house. I think we can actually get down to the house level from here as well. In these steps. Right, we're moving on a little bit now, and uh, I think they're um, they've sort of called today autumn colours or something. And you can see why because. Um, the colours are coming out on the trees and stuff. So we're going back now past the uh, old tractor that we saw earlier and stuff. Yeah, uh, Super Dexter.
in the late uh, 19th century. Apparently they added um, quite a few cascades, around 14 or something. And uh, here you can see uh, one of them. And there's some kind of um, like ruined buildings here as well. Here we are. See, there's like a little ruined building next to the cascade there. And then there's this one here. And there's even a bit of glass left at the uh, other side of this building, in that window. Uh, I mean, not sure what this was all about, but interesting. Might have been some sort of um, pump house or something to do with waterworks, because there's um, through the trees you can see some old sort of pipe work and stuff. And like I say, there's a, a window at the end there, still with the glass in. Here's that building and the cascade from the uh, side. This is an interesting little thing, yeah. I uh, honestly don't know what it is. It's got an interesting uh, design on the front. Looks like some kind of uh, little tunnel or storage area. These appear to be sort of fixed onto the uh, surface behind. And they actually look sort of um, ancient, sort of Central or Southern American or something. Southern American, not Southern. So yeah, they're sort of fixed onto the wall. So maybe they've been like bought from somewhere else and uh, just fitted onto them for a bit of interest. Look at this up this path, there's a, a bridge going over it. I'll try and find my way up there in a minute and uh, Scare myself to death by walking across it. I think um, there was a map at the start, and I think this was the Chinese bridge or something. Is this the way to the bridge? Almost. Okay, here goes. Ooh. Okay, let's get off here. We're back near the road under again now.
is actually a walled garden not too far from uh, the rotunda just down this little path Just off the bottom of the main lake, um, there's supposed to be an ice house and I think it's going to be this down here, under this little tuft of grass. So let's have a little look. Convenient place for the ice house anyway, right next to the lake. So you could get the frozen ice off and uh, get it straight in the ice house to be stored. So yeah, that looks like the ice house. Can't really see much, but yeah. There's a hole in the top, and that was probably for dropping the ice in. I would have thought. So yeah, I believe that's the ice house. And uh, down a little path from by the ice house. There's something else that would have gone well with the uh, swimming pool that, that I've got. Let's have a little look. Yeah, so I believe we have tennis courts. There we go. So they got swimming pool, tennis courts, so pretty good. Then you got this little room next to the tennis courts for uh, getting changed, refreshments or whatever. And I can hear some running water. Uh, just down here. It looks like we've got um, another cascade. As you can see, this uh, cascade leads to further cascades down there. This is a nice view. The ice house with the uh, rotunda in the distance behind it. Couple of nice doggies to uh, welcome you as you walk around. Some nice old steps there. some autumn colours supposed to be a boathouse um, 
sort of towards the end of the lake somewhere as well. So I'm just trying to find them. Huh. Here it is hidden down here. actually say there's a couple of boats in there as well just under there let's try and zoom in a little bit so an old stone boat house let's investigate further There's boats in there, but um, how'd you get in there? Hmm. Here we go. Ah, look at that. Wow, that's pretty cool. We're in the boat house. That's really good. Looks like good fun, doesn't it? Right. And there's the house again. And uh, this place, it's mostly been in private hands, apart from uh, at least one time, just after the Second World War, until about 1962, when it was um, a boys' boarding school. So we've seen the main lake uh, already, which is there. <coughs> then the main lake uh, feeds into the lower lake down here. And then I believe the lower lake feeds into um, a series of cascades, the one that we saw near to the uh, tennis courts earlier. Yeah, so we're back to the Cascades by the uh, tennis courts. 
and that's uh, pretty much all I'm going to be looking at today. But yeah, I'm really impressed with this little place. And uh, the gardens indeed are very picturesque. So I mean, if you, uh, if you get the chance to pop in sometime, I'd recommend it. Like I say, they only open a few times a year. So um, you have to check it out and see what's available. And just the other side of the uh, stream or whatever it is there. That's where I parked earlier. As you can see, these uh, cascades just continue sort of down the hill a little bit. So yeah, uh, thanks for watching my video again. I really appreciate it. And hopefully you found it interesting. So uh, yeah, see you next time. Thank you.